Hello and welcome to new this week on artistloud.com the sound of independence. Today on the show I have with me a singer and a songwriter whose music celebrates emancipation, strength and empowerment. Her songs are beautiful stories. Today on the show she is here to celebrate her life and her music as she's all set to launch her latest album Hope Fate Time and Me on artistloud.com. Please welcome Geetu Hinduja. Geetu welcome to the show. Uh, I want to ask you something that uh, at this age are you starting a fresh a new career or are you just trying to live up to the name you have? Well, um, music is something I've done for several years. Wow. I think I've ju I'm just intensifying my efforts and taking it further right now. So when was the first time you started singing and playing the guitar? Actually, I started as a teenager. Huh. And uh, then, you know, every teenager who wanted to be cool played the guitar. Yeah. So that's what I did. So you admit that you want to be cool? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Somebody's being honest. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, then cut to several years later, got married and had two children yeah. and had nothing better to do in life. And so I started playing the guitar again. And um, I, I started singing. And that's when I discovered that that's really what I wanted to do. Yeah. And then uh, life kept happening, had yet another child, brought them up, so on and so forth. And then finally, I did make an album about 20 years ago. OK. Um, I think it was way before its time. Mm -hmm. And now this is the second one. Wow. So who forced you? Did you realize that, you know, uh, enough of this, so I need to get back to music? Or somebody forced you into it? No, no one really forced me into it. I think it, things just happened organically, of course. I always, even while I was not doing it professionally, I hmm. continued to study music. Oh. So I would, whether it was singing with the choir or learning Indian classical, in some form or the other, I just kept getting um, educated in music, went to different teachers and so on and so forth. So that's something I never gave up. Yeah. So whatever I've kind of learned today has mm. been something that I've kind of um, pursued and uh, learned on my own. Even art to that extent is something that I um, seeked out and then learned about. Mm. So what is the reaction of your family now? You have three daughters, right? Yeah. What is their reaction? I think they're proud of me. Yeah? Yeah. Did they say, Mama, is that what you're going to be doing at this age? No, I think they always knew that I wanted to sing. Yeah. And uh, in all honesty, I didn't even think about age when I started doing this. It's everyone else started pointing it out to me. You know, like this friend of mine said that, uh, oh, you'll be a great example for our children because, you know, they'll look up to you. I said, why? And yeah. so she said, because you're starting at this age. I said, really? I mean, I didn't even think about it, in all honesty. It's just something that happened. You've got to be honest. By heart, how old do you think you are? Um, I think in my early 30s. Early 30s, super. Yes. <laughs> Finally, there's somebody who says that, you know, I'm in my early 30s. Women just don't grow about 21, 23. Uh, you know, jokes apart, you know, I like that perspective of yours that, you know, it's, age is only a number. You, when you started playing. So do you get upset when people start saying, or in fact, I just also said that, you know what, at this age, you're doing this, at this age, you're doing that. Do you get upset? I didn't get upset so much as mm. I couldn't comprehend it. Yeah. I couldn't understand what they were talking about because I just don't think about it. How do you draw your inspirations? I think my inspiration is really life itself. Mm. I think I ask people a lot of questions. Yeah. I uh, love knowing about people's lives. I think um, human beings are amazingly resilient. That inspires me. Wow. Yeah. So you, you, you decided to name your album Hope, Faith, Time and Me. Did you decide it now or was it always the tagline, um, always the title? No. Um, Hope, Faith, Time and Me, the title track of the album, yeah. is a song that my sister wrote. Oh. My sister was just 38 when she died of cancer two years ago. Oh. Um, she asked me to sing for a fundraiser for the Indian Cancer Society and I said I would um, sing a song provided she wrote the song. So she said, well, how long do I have? And I said, um, like 24 hours. And she said, you know, I've never written a song before. But she was a very creative person. 
so I knew she was capable of it. And so she wrote this song about her journey with cancer. Let's pay a tribute to her. Let's celebrate her life and your music. And let's have a performance of Hope, Faith, Time and Me. That's appropriate, yes. Yeah. Making love to life I see it, yes I do I see it everywhere Hope, faith, time and me Hope in my pillow As it holds my head to dream Hope as the day breaks I can feel the pain recede Hope in my tears as I grow strong, fired with fears, the night is never long. Hope, faith, time and me. Defeat is not an option, death is not my friend. Hope is my shadow, I'll live until the end. I see it, yes I do, I see it. Everywhere, hope, faith, time, and me. 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 That was an amazing song. Or is it the other way around that? Because your sister wrote in a situation, you always thought about that. Uh, I do relate to her situation. And very often when I have uh, performed, I have, uh, in the audience, I can spot who's had cancer in the family. Right, right. Because they immediately pick up on it. And uh, or not just cancer, but any yeah. kind of challenge. Right, right. And I see that the song moves them. Mm. For me personally, yeah, I think I'm, I'm too connected to her yeah. to, to detach myself from it. There's yeah. another thing which you are you know, connected deeply with, which is your music. So you created a band, right? Yeah. And the name of the band is? Brown Folk. Brown Folk. So please tell us uh, who all are there in the band. OK, so there's um, the original band was uh, Prasad uh, Ruparel. He is the guitarist, arranger, mm. composer, producer of the album. Super talented, Prasad Ruparel. That's right. Yeah. And then there's Sri Ram, yeah. who plays the flute. And I always think of him as a counterpoint to my voice on the album. So Sri Ram is uh, terribly talented himself. And uh, he plays with another band called Filter Coffee also. Oh. So this really is the core band. And okay. then now we've got uh, uh, Siegfried Dias, who plays percussion. Okay. And um, uh, Keith who plays bass guitar. Wow. Yeah. You know, I'm going to talk about your life, your music, the band, and the album on the other side of the break. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. I'm going to be right back. So I think it's... Every a, man does. Every man does? Yeah. Whenever uh, he's there with his wife, <laughs> he's just somewhere else. The moment, you know, the wife starts to talk about... Rubbish. Things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs>
time we are coming together because uh, we haven't performed. You are going to see both of us together for the first time, and that's why it's called Sister Act. <laughs> Sister Act on Thursday, 4 p.m. Only on artistallowed.com, where it's music first. Welcome back to new this week on artsloud.com, the sound of independence. I have with me Geetu Hinduja. You know, before the break, we were talking about your band. So when did you realize that I need to have a band now? Okay, I think um, what happened was uh, that I decided to give myself a birthday present one year. And uh, When's your birthday? On the 19th of November. 19th of November. All her fans, <laughs> 19th of November. You cannot forget it because it's Indira Gandhi's birthday. Wow. Yeah, so on that birthday, I just decided to gift myself a band. I said, I'm going to put a band together uh, where we would do something that was what I thought of as my sound. Yeah. So what is your sound, actually? I knew very, very clearly that I wanted a very acoustic sound. Mm. I didn't want something that was highly, um, with a lot of technological intervention. Right. Uh, which is part of the reason why I stayed away from the keyboards as something that uh, we use as a live instrument, right. because I feel that's an easy instrument to doctor and you know, um, perhaps create all kinds of sounds. And okay. I wanted something where we had more string instruments. Okay. So as a result of which our band originally had one, two, three, the first concert we did, I think we had about four guitarists. Um, we didn't even have a percussionist. Yeah, four guitarists. I had the choir behind me. So, yeah. Wow. I mean, and, and the flautist was there, yes. You know, it's quite... Uh, when did you perform together? Which 2009. year was it? 2009. And do you have memories of the first concert? Yes. How did people react to this kind of sound? Or as I would say, your kind of sound? I think people enjoyed it. Yeah. I think people did enjoy it because... Uh, we did this at Bandra, at the mm. Celebrate Bandra, and the crowd at Celebrate Bandra is uh, a lot of people that were in some sense familiar with the kind of music that I did because I would occasionally sing at St. Andrews and okay. for the local stuff happening there. Okay. And uh, so I think it, it um, was an extension of my solo singing. Right. So which was nice. Which is your fondest memory of the first ever songs you've ever sung? One of the Joan Baez songs. Can you sing a couple of lines? Okay. It would be a treat for all your fans and all the music lovers. Who like Joan Baez? Of course. Okay, so this is a, a song that I once sang at a concert and I remember um, a couple of men coming up to me and telling me that I made them cry. So that was nice. your ghost again but that's not unusual it's just that the moon is full and you happen to call here I sit and on the telephone hearing a voice I'd known a couple of light years ago Heading straight for a fall As I remember your eyes Were blue up and robin's eggs My poetry was lousy, you said Where are you calling from? 
brown A booth in the Midwest Ten years ago I bought you some cufflinks You brought me some things We both know what memories can bring They bring diamonds and rust So it goes. Now I know that why you did not want to have a lot of electronic interference in your band. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Thank it's, you. It was beautiful. Talia! Thank you. Your first album released in 1993, right? What was it called? Dancing Free. Dancing Free. Wow. So tell us something more about the album. What were the kind of tracks? Um, the entire album was made by uh, Dinsha Sanjana, and uh, I was not very involved with the music of the album. It was completely Dinsha's baby, and he mm. did a great job with it. So Dancing Free really talks about um, this person who is uh, physically in one place, okay. but is dreaming of being in another place. Okay. So I think it's... Every a, man does. Every man does. Yeah. Whenever uh, he's there with his wife, <laughs> he's just somewhere else. The moment, you know, the wife starts to talk about... Rubbish. Things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rubbish. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's Dancing Free. So, how have things progressed from the first album to the second one? How have you evolved? Experienced more music and have developed as an individual. Right. So, I know for sure that this is what I like, this is what I don't like. Right. And now I understand what suits my voice, what doesn't suit mm -hmm. my voice. And... Uh, what I am as a person or who I am as a person and what, what are the stories I would like to tell. Okay, now I'd also like to talk about another track in the album, Atma Shatakam, if I said that right. And did you write the same? No, Atma Shatakam is, uh, has been written by Adi Shankaracharya, so okay. it's an old shlok. And uh, it was a shlok um, that he wrote when he went to his guru and his guru asked him, um, who are you? So rather than answering who he was, he uh, recited this work, verse which he's obviously written. And it basically says, I am one with the universe. I am neither mother, nor father, right. nor child, nor student, nor teacher. Right. I am one with the universe. Right. I am not uh, sin. I am not virtue. Right. So it talks about all the contradictions. Mm -hmm. And it just says, I am one with the universe. Right. So. Yeah, that's uh, what Atma Shatakam is about. So it's called the Song of the Soul. Aham Gachami. So let's have the performance of Atma Shatakam.
Wow. You really know how to sing in Sanskrit and you just said that it's all that good. It was great, by the way. Thank you. It was great. <laughs> okay, I want to ask you, what is your philosophy of life? I think it's really um, live every moment and uh, yeah, just enjoy everything you do or yeah. don't do it. Or don't do it. Don't, don't so do live it. life to the fullest, right? Yeah. You know, after the break, I'm going to talk to you something very interesting. Oh gosh, then there are a couple of things I can't tell you. Nobody's listening, it's okay, mute. I yeah. can't. Yeah. You'll be scandalized. For example. Can't. Welcome back after the break. I have with me Geetu Hinduja. Geetu, I spoke to you about the things you would like to do, which you haven't done. Were you able to figure out a couple of them? Um, one is I really, really, really want to learn how to dance wildly on stage. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I've gotten to that point and I keep have these wonderful dancer friends who I keep saying, come on, you're going to show me how to let loose. Um, but I guess I'm so used to playing the guitar always yeah. that um, so I want to dance wildly on stage. Okay. That's one thing. To your music or to somebody else's music? I don't care. Doesn't matter. It has to be on stage. Awesome. Travel a hell of a lot. Yeah. And do things when I'm traveling. I want to go to South America. I'm, I'm afraid to travel alone. So I go to places that I'm familiar with. I don't go to places that are like unknown territory and right. whatever. So yeah, I'd like to be able to do that. Then there are a couple of things I can't tell you. Nobody's listening, it's okay, mute. I yeah. can't. Yeah. You'll be scandalized. For example. Can't. Just give us a hint. You'll say you're a mom, you're a grandma. Doesn't what are you doing no, thinking about all Okay, first of can't. all, you doesn't look a grandmom for sure. Doesn't matter. One. You only said that age is a number. I uh, agree. Uh, you know. But yeah. you know, there are some mysteries have to remain in life. Oh. Yeah. I think. You ha you guessed? No. Yeah. <laughs> a man can never guess what's going on in a woman's mind. That is true. Yeah. So, so don't try. You know, so of course, I, I am not even going there. And, I'm yeah. not even heading to that territory. You know, uh, you've come up at a time where independent music is actually spreading its wings, thanks to the digital world now. Do you think if you would have come 10 years ago, you really wouldn't have been able to achieve this much as well. I completely agree. Yeah? I completely agree because now, you know, thanks to digital distribution and social networking, yeah. I have people who have heard my music all over the world and it's, it's amazing, it's remarkable. Yeah. And um, they even connect with something like the shlok, uh, which, you know, normally it would have been alien stuff for right. them. But I think the internet the, has just opened up the world to, yeah. to different uh, readings and understandings of mm. everything. Yeah. So uh, what are your future projects going to be? Um, like I uh, was saying earlier, I don't have a project in mind yeah. right now. What I'd really like to do is, is uh, perform with um, different kinds of bands in different venues um, and uh, experiment as much as possible. I even want to do more um, singing in different languages. Okay. 
And uh, so that's really, I need to now um, stop having a structured project and have a slightly wider Wow, that's quite interesting. Platform. Yeah. So you, so you just said that you want to perform more and more. Yeah. So why not have a performance now? Perfect. And uh, what song would you like to perform for us? Rise Up, O oh Woman. Rise Up, O oh Woman. Yes. Okay. So what is that? Uh, you know, tell me something more about the song. Um, this song is really um, uh, dealing with the woman. And I think very often we kind of go through life blaming isne aise kaha, usne waise kiya, iske liye aise ho gaya. Huh. And I think it's high time we stopped doing that. Okay. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Well, that's a wonderful thought. Yeah. And I'm sure it's going to be a great performance like your previous ones. Thank you. Let's have the performance. That was surely a powerful performance and a powerful song, for sure. Uh, you know, before we sign off, I would like to ask you that here's a guitar, and you know, you sing a song for yourself. Wouldn't that yeah. be great? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is a song that I um, I live by in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's called Ready for the Storm. Ready for the Storm. Yeah. Okay. So Ready for the Storm is a song that was um, written by a band called Dianta. Okay. And um, that's an Irish folk band. We go. So I'll sing a little bit of that. The waves rush in and the tide pulls out. It's an angry sea, but there is no doubt that the lighthouse will keep shining in the night to warn the lonely sailor. The lightning strikes and the wind cuts cold through the sailor's bones to the sailor's soul till there's nothing left that he can hold except the roaring ocean. And I am ready for the storm. Yes, so ready I'm. I'm ready for the storm. Ready for the storm. Well, that was Geetu Hinduja. You can check out her latest album, Hope, Faith, Time, and Me, only on artslaw.com. I'm going to catch up with you next Monday, 4 p.m. Till then. Keep listening to original music. Give me mercy for my.
my dreams Cause every confrontation seems to tell me What it really means to be a lonely sailor Where are the rest of the six band members? There was the sound of the wind, the sound of the sea and nothing else. Almost like a supernatural experience where you feel that there's a conversation happening. Where we come from, where we going to? It was more of feeling, you know, the sound is following the feeling basically. Caring for the, caring for the, who made us cry, made us cry, still here. 